good morning or good afternoon whenever you're doing uh, reading this or watching this. We're going to be reading chapter four of The Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. And let's review some of the things that just happened before. Uh, we heard from, we got to meet most of the characters and see a little bit of their personalities. Uh, we kind of had a reaction to the smoke coming from the Westing house from many of the characters. And Turtle is going to, uh, in chapter two, I believe she made a bet with two other characters that she could spend more time in the Westing house than just five minutes. So that is what is gonna happen in this next chapter. We're gonna, she's gonna actually fulfill the bet and see how long she can make it. I'm going to be reading it and I would like you to follow along. We're, we're just reading chapter four today, but I'm gonna share my screen so you can also see the book. My page numbers might be different than yours, but I thought that might be a little fun for you if I shared my screen as well. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started. Chapter four, The Corpse Found. The Halloween moon was full. Except for her receding chin, Turtle Wexler looked every inch the witch, her dark unbraided hair streaming wild in the wind from under her peaked hat. A putty wart pasted on her small beaked nose. If only she could fly to the Westinghouse on a broomstick instead of scrambling over rocks on all fours, but with all she had to carry. Under the long black cape, the pockets of her jeans bulged with the necessities for the night's dangerous vigil. Doug Who had already reached the top of the cliff and taken a station behind the maple on the lawn. The track star was chosen timekeeper because he could run faster than anyone in the state of Wisconsin. Here she comes, it's about time, he thought. Shivering knee deep in damp leaves that couldn't do his leg muscles much good, he readied his thumb on the button of the stopwatch. Turtle squinted into the blackness that lay within the open French doors, open as though someone or something was expecting her. Interesting. Maybe some foreshadowing there? There's no such thing as a ghost. Besides, all you had to do was speak friendly like to them. Ghosts like dogs know when a person's scared. Ghosts or worse, Otis Amber had said. Well, not even the worst could hurt Turtle Wexler. She was pure of heart indeed. She only kicked shins in self-defense, so that couldn't hurt against her. She wasn't scared. She was not scared. I think Turtle might be scared. I think she's trying to convince herself here. Hurry up! That was Doug from behind the tree. At $2 a minute, 25 minutes would pay for a subscription to the Wall Street Journal. She could stay all night. She was prepared. Turtle checked her pockets. Two sandwiches, Sandy's flask filled with orange pop, a flashlight, her mother's silver cross to ward off vampires. The putty wore on her nose, soaked in Angela's perfume in the event she was locked up with the stinking corpse, was, clogged, was clogging her nostrils with sticky sweet, sweetness. Turtle took a deep breath of chill night air and flinched with pain. She was afraid of dentists, not ghosts, or don't think about purple waves. Think about $2 a minute. Now, one, two, three, three and a half, go. Doug checked his stopwatch, nine minutes. 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Suddenly, a terrified scream, a young girl's scream pierced the night. Should he go in or was this one of the brat's tricks? Another scream, closer. <coughs> Clutching the bunched cape around her waist, Turtle came hurtling out of the Westinghouse. <coughs> Turtle had seen the corpse in the Westinghouse, but, was not at rot but it was not rotting and it was not sprawled on an oriental rug. The dead man was tucked in a four-poster bed. A throbbing whisper, purple, purple, or was it turtle, turtle, whatever it was, it was scary, had beckoned her to the master bedroom on the second floor. And maybe it was a dream. No, it could be. She ached all over from the tumble down the stairs. The moon was down, the window dark, Turtle lay in the narrow bed in her narrow room, waiting, dark, still dark, waiting. At last, slow morning crept up the cliff and raised the Westing house, the house of whispers, the house of death. Two dollars times 12 equals $24. Thud! The morning newspaper was flung against the front door. 
girl tiptoed through the sleeping apartment to retrieve it and climbed back into bed. The dead man staring at her from the front page. The face was younger, the short beard, or the, the short beard darker, but it was he, all right. Sam Westing, found, dead. Found? No one else knew about the bedded down corpse except Doug, and he had not believed her. Then who found the body? The Whisperer? This section right here, because it's smaller, this is from the article. Samuel W. Westing, the mysterious industrialist who disappeared 13 years ago, was found dead in his Westingtown mansion last night. He was 65 years old. The only child of immigrant parents, orphaned at the age of 12, self-educated, hardworking Samuel Westing saved his laborer's wages and bought a small paper mill. From these meager beginnings, he built the giant Westing Paper Products Corporation and founded the city of Westingtown to house his thousands of workers and their families. His estate is estimated to be worth over $200 million. Turtle read that again. $200 million? Wow. When asked the secret of his success, the industrialist always replied, clean living, hard work, and fair play. Westing set his own example. He neither drank nor smoked and never gambled. Yet he was a dedicated gamesman and a master at chess. Turtle had been in the game room. That's where she picked up the billiard cube she had carried upstairs as a weapon. A billiard, billiards game is a game of pool. That's just like the formal name to call pool. So we, she picked up a pool um, stick. A great patriot, Samuel Westing was famous for his fun-filled 4th of July celebrations. Whether disguised as Ben Franklin or a lowly drummer boy, he always acted a role in the elaborately staged pageants which he wrote and directed. Perhaps best remembered was his surprise portrayal of Betsy Ross. Games and feasting followed the pageant, and at sunset, Mr. Westing put on his Uncle Sam costume and set off fireworks from his front lawn. The spectacular pyrotechnic display could be viewed 30 miles away. Fireworks! So that's what was in those boxes stamped danger. Explosives stacked in the ground floor storeroom. What a pyrotechnic display that would make if they all went off at the same time. The Paper King's later years were marred by tragedy. His only daughter, Violet, drowned on the eve of her wedding, and two years later, his troubled wife deserted their home. Although Mr. Westing obtained a divorce, he never remarried. Five years later, he was sued by an inventor over the rights to the disposable paper diaper. On his way to court, Samuel Westing and his friend, Dr. Sidney Sykes, were involved in a near-fatal automobile accident. Both men were hospitalized with several or with severe injuries. Sykes resumed his Westingtown medical practice and the po post of county coroner, but Westing disappeared from sight. It was rumored, but never confirmed, that he controlled the vast Westing Paper Products Corporation from a private island on the South Seas. He is still listed as chairman of the board. We are as surprised as you are and deeply saddened as spokesman for, for Julian R. Eastman, president and chief, of, chief executive officer of the corporation stated when informed that Westing's body was found in a lakeside home. Dr. Sykes' response was, a tragic end to a tragic life. Sam Westing was truly a great and important man. The funeral will be private. The, ex the executor of the Westing estate said the deceased requests that in place of flowers, donations be sent to the blind bowlers of America. Turtle turned the news page of the newspaper, but that was all. That was all? There was no mention of how the body was found. There was no mention of the envelope propped on the bedside table, which was on which a shaky hand had scrawled, if I am found dead in bed. She had been edging her way against the four poster, reading the words in the beam of the flashlight. When she felt the hand, the waxy dead hand that lay on the red, white, and blue quilt. Through her scream, she had seen the white bearded face. She remembered running, tripping over the billiard cue, falling down the stairs, denting Sandy's flask, and dropping everything else. There was no mention of the two suspicious peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on the premises, or a flashlight, or a silver cross on a chain. There was no mention of prowlers, no mention of anyone having seen a witch, no mention of footprints on the lawn, track shoes, and sneakers size six. Oh well, she had nothing to fear other than losing her mother's cross. Old Mr. Westing probably died of a heart attack or pneumonia. It was drafty in there. 
Turtle hid the folded newspaper in her desk drawer, counted her black and blue marks in the mirror, seven, excuse me, dressed and set out to find four people who knew she had been in the Westinghouse that night. Doug who? Theo Theodorakis, Otis Amber, and Sandy. They owed her $24. At noon, the 62-year-old delivery boy began his rounds. He had 16 letters to deliver from E.J. Plum, attorney at law. Otis Amber knew what the letter said because one of them was addressed to him. As a named beneficiary in the estate of Samuel W. Westing, your attendance is required in the South Library of the Westing House tomorrow at 4 p.m. for the reading of the will. Means old man Westing left you some money, he explained. Just sign this receipt here. What do you mean? What does position mean? It means position, like a job. Most receipts have that to make sure you make sure the right person gets the right letter. Grace Windsor Wexler wrote housewife, crossed it out, wrote decorator, crossed it out, and wrote heiress. Then she wanted to know who else, how many, how much? I ain't allowed to say nothing. The other heirs were too stunned by the unexpected legacy to bother him with such questions. Madam Who marked an X with her husband and her husband filled in her name and position. Theo wanted to sign the receipt for his brother, but Chris insisted on doing it himself. Slowly and taking great pains, he wrote Christos Theodorakis, bird watcher. By the time the sun had set behind Sunset Tower's parking lot, Otis Amber, deliverer, had completed his rounds. And that is where we're going to stop today. Now, the next two chapters we are going to read together, and it is where all of the heirs are going to come together and we're going to hear the will. And the Westing game will officially begin. I can only, uh, I can't wait to see what you think about these chapters because this is where it starts to get really fun and the plot starts to thicken. All right, make sure you have, you write down three bullet points of what happened in this chapter in your case file. We will be, I will be checking them next time we are in class if you're watching this in 2020. Have a great day.